Okay, you have made it to the end of your chemistry pace 1125. Congratulations. I hope you found some success in doing the stoichiometry, the mole to mole problems and all those different conversions from grams to moles and moles to grams. Uh, a lot of steps involved, but um, hopefully by, by this point, it's the light's starting to come on, it's making sense. And even though it takes a bit of effort, you're understanding what you're doing. Let's end with two concepts that the pace covers. One is called yield, and the other is called limiting reactant. So here is your test tip, all right? <laughs> Since you made it this far and you're listening to this video, let me just tell you. The PACE only has one or two problems for you to solve using theoretical yield, actual yield, percent yield. They have maybe one on the checkup, but then it does not appear on the self-test or the PACE test, at least solving any problems with it, okay? So push through it, struggle through it, do your best to follow the example in the PACE and do the one problem. And you can look at the score key if you need to, but don't stress out if you feel like, I don't get this, it's the end of the pace and they threw so much stuff at me, how am I supposed to know this? So the one thing you do need to know is the definitions of theoretical yield, actual yield, percent yield. So write those definitions down on a three by five card, study them. You will need to know them for a matching section on the checkup. As you can see, that same thing is on the self-test, and I have access to the PACE test, and I'm telling you, you need to know it for the PACE test, but just the definitions, okay? So you'll use this formula that they have in the PACE <clears throat> to solve one of the problems, but you do not have to do it on the PACE test. So does that encourage you a little bit, okay? So do your best on your homework for this, but like I said, don't stress out about having to know how to do it later. And finally, the, <clears throat> the last thing is the limiting reactant. And actually, I feel like this is a fairly important concept, and I'm kind of surprised that they don't spend more time talking about it. My guess is in the next pace, we're going to talk about it more. So at this point, they're just introducing it. And what it basically means is if you have two reactants and... Um, Maybe you just have way more of one than you need. So the one that gets used up first would be the limiting reactant. So you may end up with some leftover of the second reactant. <clears throat> so whichever one gets used up first is the limiting reactant. Uh, they walk you through an example figuring out, <clears throat> by solving the problem, which how to know which one gets used up first. Therefore, which one is the limiting reactant? <clears throat> but that's the one you would use to determine how much product is produced. Again, don't spend a lot of time trying to understand this concept and figure it out. <clears throat> you need to know the definition for matching section on the checkup self-test pace test. But you do not have to solve any problems. Yay! So on your upcoming tests, no problems with limiting reactants, just know the definition. Does that encourage you a little bit, help you end on a good note? So um, as long as you know how to do all of these mold to mold things and um, you have corrected all of your work, take a look at your checkup before you do it. Make sure you're prepared for it and then dive in. Same with the self-test. Finish up your pace test and by the time you get to the next pace, hopefully, Unless my COVID gets worse, but my plan is to uh, use a few more of my isolation days to make more paces <clears throat> for pace 11, more videos for pace 11, 26. All right, do well.